Hey guys, welcome back to OIC Chris, where it's never too late to have an OIC moment. Um, just a reminder about reaching the 250 subscribers before the 9th of May 2022, and I'll do a live session on the 11th of May 2022. Um, in today's video, we are doing question 5 of the uh, May June pa uh, Maths Paper 1 videos. So enjoy the video and let's jump into it. Okay, let's have a look at question five. So question five is the next graph question in your question paper. So they've given us a parabola and a straight line that intercept, and they've told us there as well that C is our turning point. Okay, so let's have a look at 5.1. 5.1 asks you to calculate the coordinates of A and B. So you, your answer needs to be in coordinate form. Okay, so A and B, if you look there, is going to be your x-intercept. So we've got to take the function f of x and set it equal to zero. So I'm going to simplify this by dividing out by negative 2. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x uh, minus 8 equals to 0. And if you factorize that, you'll get x minus 4 and x plus 2, uh, which equals to 0. So we can see that x equals 4 or x equals negative 2. Okay, but you're not done. You need coordinates uh, for your final answer. So we can see that a is in the negative quadrant. Um, so A is then going to be negative 2 and 0, and B is in the positive quadrant, so therefore it's going to be 4 and 0. Okay, now let's have a look at 5.2. It says determine the uh, coordinates of C, the turning points. Okay, so uh, there are two main ways of doing this. We can use the formula, so turning point equals negative B over 2A. Okay, uh, so we can see that the B value is 4, and a is negative 2, so it's negative 4 over 2 times negative 2, which equals negative 1. Okay, this gives you your x value for your turning point. Now we substitute that into the equation. So we're looking for f of 1, which equals negative 2, 1 squared plus 4, 1 plus 16. Okay, which then should give you a turning point of 18. Okay, so your coordinates for c is then 1 and 18. The other way you could have done it is by setting f prime of x equal to 0. So if you take the derivative of f of x, it's then going to be negative 4x plus 4 equal to 0. And then you also get x equals to 1. And then you just plug it into your function and you'll also get c. Okay. Now 5.3 talks about the range. Now the range is all the possible y values of your function. So if you look at your function over there, we can see that the maximum point, which is your turning point, is c which is 18 for your y values and then it runs all the way down to negative infinity so the range is going to be for all your y values which is an element of negative infinity and then we're including 18 because that's involving our turning point we don't include infinity because it's not a number it's a concept okay now 5.4 uh, says h of x equals to f of x plus p okay and then plus q so it says f is being shifted horizontally by p and vertically by q to form h. Okay, so it's a transformation. But they tell us that the new maximum for h is 15 at x equals to 2. So this is your turning point, okay, for the h function. Okay, so the turning point for h, h turning point is then uh, 2 and 15. But what was our turning point for f? f's turning point was 1 and 18. So you can see that the graph has shifted, h has shifted one unit to the right because x has increased by 1 and it's shifted down three units because now the maximum is at 15 so it's come down. So q represents your y values okay and that's coming down by uh, minus three units okay uh, and your x values, okay, oh, sorry, is, sorry, q is three units, okay, and um, p is then minus one because we've shifted it to the right, okay. Uh, let's just double check that. It's come down, so this should actually be minus three because we've come down by three units, okay. Now, g negative 1 is the inverse of the function. That's what's been asked in 5.5. It says determine the inverse of g. Okay, so all we do is we set y equal to x. 
So therefore we have x equals to 2y plus 4. Okay, now we just rewrite in terms of y. Okay, so I'm going to take that over. So x minus 4 equals to 2y. So y equals to x minus 4 all over 2. You can simplify that. It's equal to x over 2 minus 2. Okay. Now 5.6 is asking for which values of x will g the inverse of g times by g equal to 0. Okay, so we know what the functions look like, so let's substitute them in. So we have x minus 4 over 2 multiplied by 2x plus 4, and we want to know when is that equal to 0. Okay, now you would think now you must factorize this or FOIL out, but you don't need to because you can see that if this bracket equals to 0, then this whole thing is true. Or if this bracket equals to 0, then the whole thing is true. So we can say x minus 4 all over 2 must equal to 0, or 2x plus 4 must equal to 0. So if we solve the first one here, we're going to have x equal to, times that across, that's 0, so x equals to 4. And if we sort out the second one, that's 2x equals minus 4, so x equals to negative 2. So therefore, for x, which is an element of the following set of numbers, negative 2 and 4, sorry, then this expression will hold true. Okay, now let's have a look at 5.7. 5.7 is worth 5 marks over there. So they say if p of x is equal to f of x plus k, determine the values for k for which p and g do not intercept. Okay, so here's our original graph that we have. We can see that f is intercepting, or g and f intercept each other at two points. Okay, but now we've created a transformation p, and we want to know what value of k, which is my y values, will p and k not intercept each other. So note that if I take f and I shift it up to create p, we're always going to have intercepts. Why? Because this runs down to infinity. Therefore, I need to shift p, or I need to shift f down to create p, such that I never have an intercept again. Okay, so therefore we know that k needs to be negative. So I need to shift down f in order to create p. So p is probably going to sit somewhere here. And now we want to find the k value, which is our y-intercept. Okay, so let's quickly create p. So p of x equals to negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 16 plus k. Okay, now normally when we want to find intercepts, we equate the two equations to each other. Okay, so I'm going to do that to find, okay, well, if these two intercept each other, and I know where that is, then I can start working out where I can, from where I need to shift down. Okay, and then we can solve exactly for k. So I'm going to equate p of x equals to g of x to create my equations. Okay. So I'm going to have negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 16 plus k equals to 2x plus 4. Okay, sorting everything out, taking it to one side, negative 2x squared. Let's see, that's plus 2x plus 12k plus k equal to 0. Now, when we find the intercepts, we would find uh, two values because we have a parabola over here. Okay, and we could use the quadratic formula. Now in the quadratic form, quadratic formula, okay, which looks like this, okay, the thing that determines our actual intercepts is this part over here. Okay. Now if this if this over here b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, we're going to have intercepts. But if you see here p which we want to create is not going to have any intercepts. So therefore b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero, meaning we have a negative under the square root, which means we can't have any x-intercepts. So I'm looking for b squared minus 4ac less than zero. Now if I substitute in the values from this equation, which I have over here, okay, which is the intercepts, I'm going to get that. I'm going, I'm going to have 2 squared minus 4, negative 2, and then c is this 12 plus k, so 12 plus k. Okay, and that must be less than zero. So if you solve this over here, you should get an a, a k value, which must be less than 12.5. Okay, so therefore k must either equal to, um, or must be less than 12.5 in order for p not to intercept g. 
Okay, and that's how we go about doing this equation or question. Okay, if you did find this video helpful for question five, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, please leave a thumbs up on the video as well. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Uh, just a reminder for the live session on the 11th of May, we need to reach 250 subscribers by the 9th of May and then I shall do that. Um, I just want to say thank you for the support and thank you for watching the videos and it's never too late to ever. Oh, I see you moment.